The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. If you have a friend who is a representative of the Equitable Life Assurance Society, maybe this phone conversation will sound familiar to you. Hello? This is your Equitable Society representative. I just called up to remind you to listen to This Is Your FBI tonight. The Equitable Society has some good news for you in the middle commercial. What news is that? There's a new edition just off the press of the Equitable Society's famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. That's the chart that made such a big hit with members of this audience last year. So be sure to listen to the middle commercial to learn how to get your copy of the Equitable Society's new fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Tonight's FBI file, Lady Luck's Husband. It is a regrettable but true fact that many decent, hard-working citizens hear or read about the current crime wave and regard it as something which only remotely concerns them. They are wrong. And if you believe that the crime wave does not directly affect you, then you are wrong, too. In the first six months of this year, thieves in the United States stole property worth almost $60 million, an average of well over $2 million a week. That property was not stolen from any special class of people, but from everyone in every strata of our society. More than one theft was committed every second of every hour around the clock, day and night. And the thing to remember is that for every theft, there was a victim. A victim who might just as easily have been you. Tonight's file opens in a gambling house located in a suburb in one of our large eastern cities. The owner, a lean, hard-looking, gray-haired man, is standing near the entrance and watching the various tables as a woman approaches. Where have you been? At the bar. I told you to lay off the grog, didn't I? I only had two drinks. Our, uh, boy is here. I know. I got the office from Charlie. Which one is he? The guy in the gray suit, standing next to Harry. I see him. You remember everything I told you? Don't worry about it. Here. Here's some chips. Go over and bet with him. Whatever he bets. There's only 200 here. You won't need any more. He's going to win tonight. Okay. See you later. Yeah. Good luck. Five and a two. Pay the com and take the line. Next shooter. I'll shoot 50. 50 is right. And make your plays. Here he comes. Six and a one. Natural. Pay the line. Now, let it ride. I'll stay with him. Keep lucky, mister. Coming out. E-11, pay the line. Keep those dice hot. I'm shooting a hundred. And another hundred with him. Two and a four. Six is the point. Twenty on a hard six. Bet me twenty the same way. Here he comes. It's a three and a three. Hard six. Pay the line. Pay the hard six. Make your bet. Same man shooting. You're my lucky man. Yeah, you ain't doing bad for me, either. Make your bets. All right, make your bets. Shoot another hundred. How about you, honey? I'll go. Uh-oh. I've got to quit. Uh, what's the matter? I have to duck somebody. Still your dice, now, wait a Mr. minute. Come I don't want to lose you. You're too lucky. Well, then cash in my chips for me and meet me later at the bar. <laughs> Hey, over here. Oh, sorry I kept you waiting, honey. I had to finish my shoot. How'd you make out? Oh, I went about a G. Well, not bad. Yeah, here's your dough. 600. Say, thanks. Can I buy you another drink? Sure. What is that, scotch? Mm, and water. Hey, Joe, two scotch and water, huh? Yes, sir. I'm sorry I had to run out on you like that. 
Well, did you have to? Yes. Why? Oh, I spotted a fellow coming in. A friend of my husband's. Your husband's? Uh-huh. You see, he doesn't want me to gamble, so I have to sneak out and come here alone. He must be daffy. If I was married to anybody as lucky as you, I'd drive you to the game. Well, uh, I'm not usually so lucky. Maybe it was me? It was. Why don't you just say we're a good combination? Okay. One that ought to stay in business. Is uh, that an invitation? Well, now that you bring it up. Yeah. But I'm a married woman. Well, you're with me now. Well, big, strong type fellow. Now, now it's like rolling dice. I pick my spots. Mm, I see. Hey, I don't even know your name. It's Hazel. Oh, I'm Bill. Hiya, Bill. Hi. Hey, look, uh, I got an idea. What? Where'd you tell your husband you were going tonight? To, to the theater with a girlfriend. You got any more excuses like that? That depends. What do you mean? I'm like you. I pick my spots. Well, how about picking a spot to meet me tomorrow night? No, look. We'll listen to music instead of dice. What do you say? Well... Okay. Meanwhile, in the local FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is seated at his desk when Special Agent Frank Brady enters. Oh, Frank, full of a chair. Thanks, Jim. Hey, congratulations on the baby. Oh, that's right. I haven't seen you since then. <laughs> oh, no. how's Evelyn? Fine, Jim. She and the baby came home from the hospital this morning. Oh. No sleep at night for you for the next couple of months. I've been thinking about that. <laughs> I hope there isn't too much night work on this new case. Well, maybe yes, maybe no. What's it about, Jim? I, all I know is that the boss assigned me to work with you. It's a bond job, Frank. Huh? $88,000 worth of negotiable securities were stolen two weeks ago in Los Angeles. Oh, and they uh, think the bandits are back here? No. No, the Los Angeles office arrested the bandits the day after the job. Well, I don't get it. What are we supposed to do? Find the bonds. Oh, I see. The L.A. office got a tip that the bonds were sent east right after the robbery. They, uh, they don't know how, do they? No. No, but my guess is they were sent by messenger. Now, have we got the records on the two bandits who were arrested? Yes. Yes, I've gone over them three times now, but I haven't been able to find any link that they had with anybody here in the east. Well, did either one of them have any family back here? Uh-huh. No, not according to the records. What do you think our first move ought to be, Jim? Well, I guess the only thing we can do right now is send out an alarm on the bonds, Frank. I've got all the serial numbers right here. I'll get up a list of security offices here in the city. Fine. And we'll follow up the circular with some phone calls. Check with me as soon as your list is ready, Frank, and we'll go to work. Hazel, throw me a match, will you? Hmm? Oh, sure. Here. Thanks. You look tired. I am. I was up all night. Again? Yeah, the tables ran late. We let the suckers play till six o'clock. <laughs> it's lucky I've got a boyfriend to take me out. Hmm. How are you doing with him? Not bad. We had another date last night. That's three, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, three. You got another date tonight? Mm-hmm. I'm meeting him at seven. Hmm. How nice for you. <laughs> How nice for him. You think you got him on the hook? Mm, well, all I can tell you is, last night the way he talked, you'd have thought I was the original dream girl. Mm. You like that, huh? Sure. Why not? Did you tell him you were married? Uh-huh. Have you given him the husband routine yet? Uh -huh. You mean that he doesn't understand me? Yeah. Have you used it? Not yet. You uh, kind of like this assignment, don't mm. you? Jealous, baby? No, baby. I'm just reminding you. This is a business deal you're swinging. Look, why do you need this guy so bad? I already told you we need somebody to crack a safe. Why well, couldn't we hire him? We'd have to cut the job down the middle. This way we get it for free. Oh. Honey. Huh? You've had enough fun with this guy. Tonight I want you to go to work. Hey, Jim, I was on the phone with Evelyn. The oh. baby's been sick. 
Oh, really? What's wrong? The doctor says it's nothing serious. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, it's quite a relief. He cried all night. Oh, well, you'll get used to that. Yeah, so I understand. Uh, has anything come in on the alarm, Jim? No, not a word so far. But we did get a telechat this morning from the Los Angeles office. About the bonds? Yes. One of the men who committed the robbery decided to change his plea to guilty. Well, that's good. Did you tell the whole story? Yeah, just about. Including the location of the bonds? He says they sent the bonds back here with a messenger. Well, that's what you guessed, Jim. Who was the messenger? A young hoodlum they gave $50 in expenses to. Pretty cheap for transporting that kind of loot. Well, it seems the messenger didn't know what he was carrying. I see. Who'd he bring the bonds to? A fence named Tom Reynolds. Tom Reynolds? Mm. Don't I know that name? Sure, sure you do. He's got a record that runs two pages long. A big, heavy set man with a, a small mustache? That's the guy. And now we know what our next step is. Let's see if we can find Tom Reynolds. Hazel? Yes, honey? Now, what's the matter with you tonight? What do you mean, Bill? No chatter, no smiles. You want to dance? Mm. No, baby. I got other things on my mind. Trouble? Well, I... Talk, spill it. Maybe I can help you. Come on, talk. Well, I left my husband. Oh? I couldn't stand his nagging another day. Well, that kind of a guy, huh? Yeah. Now, what was the final rule about Mm, well, it's a long story. The main thing was he always complaining about my spending too much money. I understand. That's a pretty common beef with husbands. He had no right to use it. It's my own money I was spending. You mean really yours? Yes. Well, you should feel happy to be rid of the guy. I would, but for one thing. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's a personal matter. Oh, what is it? Maybe I can straighten it out for you. Well... I had $88,000 worth of bonds, my bonds, in my husband's safe at home. And when I left, he wouldn't let me take them. Why not? He said if he kept them, it would make me come back. Are you going back? Not if I get the bonds away from him. And if you don't? Well, then I'll have to go back. I haven't got anything else to live on. How do you feel about the guy? How do you think? You think you'd like to stay away from him? You're so right. How do you feel about me? You should know by now, Bill. I'm really hooked. Honest? Honest. Look, baby, you never did tell me where you live. I'm staying at the Central Hotel. I don't mean now. Where did you live before with your husband? 28 Mapleton Drive. Honey, we're getting out of here. Why? I'm taking you back to your hotel. Then I got a little trip to make. Where to? Your house, honey. To get those bonds. <laughs> Jack? Yeah? You all through work? Yeah, yeah. Not much business tonight. We closed early. Oh. Say, so what are you doing here? I thought you had a big date. I had it already. Oh, how'd it go? Fine. Uh, did he go over to Tom's to get the bonds? Yeah, an hour ago. Is he coming back here with them? Oh, just as soon as he gets them. Ha <laughs> ha! Swell, swell. It worked out real good. You know something, Jack? Uh, what? I almost hated to do it. What? What are you talking about? Well, the boy really had a big yen for me. So? It's going to be real disillusioned. <laughs> now, ain't that too bad? I mean it. Look. Look, you ain't running a Lonely Hearts Club. This guy's coming up here any minute with 88 thou worth of bonds, and we're getting them free. Yes, Forget but... it, forget it. Now, uh, you know what to do when he gets here. Yeah. Just have him leave the bonds and say you'll see him tomorrow. Mm, I know. Oh, oh, that must be him now. Get in the other room. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, uh, just a minute. Uh, hello. Is this uh, apartment 407? Uh, well, that's right. The man said to bring this package here. Could you sign it, please? Oh, surely. Uh, there you are. Thanks. Uh, Jack. Yeah, yeah. Who was it? Delivery boy. He brought this. Oh, looks like flowers. Uh, who are they from? Uh, well, wait till I get it open. There. Hey, there's a note. Oh, wait a minute. I'll read it. What's it say? Uh... Dear Hazel, many thanks, sweetheart, to you and your real husband for tipping me off where the bonds were. Your loving sucker, Bill. (laughs) 
We will return in just a moment to tonight's file, which shows how your FBI promotes security for the nation. Now let's bring this question of security closer to home. Ed, can you see the title of this chart I'm holding in my hand? Yes, it reads a fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Right, a fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers prepared by the Equitable Society. Okay, facts don't scare me. What's this chart all about, anyway? Ed, it's designed to open your eyes to your family's financial needs if you should die. Fill in this fact-finding chart, and you'll know how much money it would take to keep your wife and children well-fed, well-housed, and well-clothed. Have you ever faced that fact, Ed? I'm ashamed to say I haven't. It'd be quite a job to figure all that out. Ed, with this Equitable Society chart, you'll have the answer in five minutes flat. Look, you're guided every step of the way by easy-to-understand pictures, which illustrate the rock-bottom expenses your family will have to meet. And when you're finished, you'll have a clear, accurate, and complete picture of just what income your family would need during the critical years. Critical years? What are they? The years before your youngest child finishes high school. Years during which the home must have a minimum income to keep it together. I see your point. Where do I get one of these fact-finding charts? And how much does it cost? Why, it doesn't cost a cent. The Equitable Society representative in your community will be glad to bring you a copy. Sit down with him, you and your wife together. There's no obligation. And get a true picture of where you stand. Phone him tomorrow to bring you an equitable fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Or send a postcard care of this ABC station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, Lady Luck's Husband. The history of the world since time began is studded with crimes. For even in the very earliest days, some men were so overcome with greed and lust that they became the first criminals. From that day on, up to and including this very minute, some men have devoted their time and their very lives to planning and committing the perfect crime. In tonight's case from the files of your FBI... You see another example of a pair of criminals who tried the same thing with the same inevitable result. Someday, man will give up that evil dream of committing that perfect crime. But from all appearances, that day will not come soon. Tonight's file continues in the local FBI field office as Jim Taylor has just returned from a trip to the home of Tom Reynolds. Well, Jim, was that the right Tom Reynolds? Yes, Frank, it was. Did he have the bonds? I don't know. What do you mean? He was on the floor, unconscious, when I got there. Well, how'd you get in? The front door was open. I guess whoever knocked Reynolds out left it that way. Well, where's Reynolds now? He's at Memorial Hospital. They came and took him away while I was there. Hmm. Did he ever regain consciousness? No, no, I didn't. Any lead on who knocked him out? Well, maybe. I worked up a set of prints that I found on his wall safe and on a strong box that was laying open on the table. I sent them on to the ident division in Washington. Well, it looks like somebody else knew Reynolds had those bonds. Whoever did must have had a pretty good grapevine because the bonds couldn't have gotten to town more than a couple of days ago. I guess word spreads fast on a deal like that. I apparently it does. What do we do now, Jim? Frank, I think the best thing to do is go home and get a couple hours sleep. We won't get a report on those prints until morning. Is that you, Jack? It ain't your boyfriend with the bonds. Oh, stop beefing, will you? Go out and get those bonds for me and I'll stop. Wasn't my fault we got double-crossed. Didn't I ask you to stay right with the guy when he did the job, didn't I? Yes, you did, but I thought it was better this way. Ah, every time you do any thinking, we get into trouble. Did I pick him out and say he was a sucker? No, that was your idea. The whole thing, the whole thing was set up for you, and if you stayed with him, we'd have the bonds. Look... You once told me, don't cry about losing a bet. That's right. You said, just worry about winning the next one. Well, we blew a bet. You blew it, not me. All right, all right, I blew it. But we're in this thing together. Let's try to figure out how we can win the next bet. Ah, that's a cinch. All we got to do is find Bill Newton. I was just over to the place where he used to live. Used to live? Yeah, yeah, the janitor told me he blew with all his bags. There must be some way to find out where he went. (sighs) I called every guy in the mob. If he shows up any place, they're going to call me. Well, let's stop worrying, then. He's got... Wait a... a minute. Huh? Do me a favor, will you? What? Throw out those flowers. Frank. 
Frank. Oh, Frank. Hi, Jim. I came right over as soon as I got your message. What's going on? We received a report from Washington on those fingerprints that I found at Reynolds' house. They were identified as belonging to a thief named Bill Newton. Ah. I checked, and I found that he lives in this building. Good. No, not so good. He's gone. Oh? Huh? Yeah, I checked out early this morning. See. I have a pass key here to his apartment, though. Come on. Any idea where he went? No. No, I talked to the superintendent. He couldn't give me anything on him. But he did have one piece of information. What's that? He said there was a thin, gray-haired man around here about two hours ago, also looking for Newton. Who could that be? I don't know. Oh, here's the elevator. Go ahead. Thanks. Uh, press number four, will you? Right. You know, whoever that gray-haired man was, it was pretty important to him to find Newton. Why'd he say that? He offered the superintendent $1,000 if he could remember where Newton was headed for when he left him. Sounds like the gray-haired man knew about the bonds. Yeah. Oh, he's up for Go ahead. Thanks. It's the last door on the left-hand side. You know, if we get lucky and find a lead, maybe we can catch Newton before he leaves town. Hello? Hello, Hazel. Anybody call me? No. No, where are you? At the joint. Oh. You coming home? Oh, uh, later. Should I get dressed for dinner? We going out? I don't know. Right now, I'm not interested in dinner. Did you hear anything about Newton? No, nobody's seen him. Well, he must be someplace. I know that. I mean, he's got to turn up sooner or later. Uh, if he turns up later, he's no good to me. I need him now. But, Jack... Uh, hold the phone a minute, honey. There's a guy trying to talk to me. What is that? What is it? When? Oh, thanks, pal. Thanks. Hazel. Hazel, Listen. How soon can you get our bags packed? Why? I just spoke to Harry Marshall. He saw Bill today. Where? At the airport. He was getting on a plane for Miami. So pack your bags and I'll pick you up in ten minutes. How are you doing in here, Frank? Not very well, Jim. Anything in that closet? No. Looks like Newton had time to pack all of his suits. Mm-hmm. Anything in these papers in the wastebasket? No, I've been through those, Jim. Oh. The only thing he left here is an overcoat. Oh. Well, that could mean he's headed someplace where he doesn't need one. Unless he left it here to throw us off. Oh, I don't think he's that smart. Besides, he didn't know we were looking for him. That's true. Did you find anything? No, the laundry hamper in the bathroom is full of soiled monogram shirts, handkerchiefs. And there's a laundry box full of clean shirts, also monogrammed, delivered after Newton had skipped. Well, those monograms fit in with what it said in his record, remember him? Oh, yes. Yes, very fancy dresser. Well, Frank, I think we'd better go back down to the office, see if we can work up some of the lead. Okay. There's nothing here except the shirts and that lot. Hey, wait a minute. What? Frank, I just thought of something. What? Let's go back in there and look over that laundry. What number are we looking for? 1027. Come on, come on. It's down this way. Are you sure he's in? Honey, I didn't give that bell captain 20 bucks for nothing. This I'm going to enjoy. When I think how he... Quiet, quiet. That's the room there. Who's there? Telegram, Mr. Newton. Step back, sucker. Well, this is a surprise. Listen, you... Lay off. I'll do the talking. What do you want? Take a guess. If it's the bonds, I haven't got them. Don't make jokes. I'm not in the mood. I'm telling you, I haven't got them. Look, son, you ever seen one of these? In case you haven't, it's a gun. Yeah, and that little thing on the end is a silencer. It don't make any noise at all when it goes off. You want me to show you? No, never mind. Where are the bonds? They're in the top drawer over there. I'll get them. Stay where you are. Hazel, take a look. Okay. Well? I'm looking. In the right-hand corner. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, I've got him. Good, good. Here you are, Jack. Now, the next time, stick to your own racket, Newton. Just crack safes. Don't try to outsmart anybody. Come on, let's get out of here. Wait a minute. I'm not finished. But, Jack, We you... can't leave the chump like this. Now, look, you got your bonds, didn't you? That ain't enough. What do you mean? I'll show you. Drop that gun. Huh? Go on, drop it. Turn around, slowly. 
Who are you? We're special agents of the FBI. What do you want with us? Those bonds? We don't know anything about them. She's right. They belong to this guy. He's lying there, hers. Suppose you tell all this to the real owner in federal court. Now, come along, all of you. Jack Mayfield and Bill Newton were tried and given a 15-year sentence for violation of the National Stolen Property Act. Jack's wife, Hazel, received a five-year sentence for her part in the crime. And so, three more criminal careers were brought to a close because of the alert observation of a special agent of your FBI. A special agent who remembered that every piece of laundry he had examined had borne the same label. He also reasoned that if Bill Newton was a fastidious dresser, it was likely he would order his new supply of shirts from the same man who had made his old ones. A check at the store revealed that Newton had called before taking the plane and had ordered his new shirt sent to him at the hotel in Miami. That was not a big clue, nor even a seemingly important one, but every special agent is trained to follow every clue, big or small, to its conclusion. For that reason, your FBI was able to close this case and once again to protect you, the American people. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Now, one last word about the Equitable Society's fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Mr. Keating, I've been looking over that chart. My wife and I have been dodging this issue for years. Now we're really going to know how she and the youngsters would get along if anything should happen to me. Believe me, I want one of those charts for myself. Well, Ed, the man who'll see that you get one of these fact-finding charts is your Equitable Society representative. No charge or obligation, of course. Make a note to phone your Equitable Society representative soon. Or send a postcard care of this ABC station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The story of a special agent's search for Santa Claus. Its subject, the Christmas season. Its title, The Return of St. Nick. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. And inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The return of St. Nick on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.